Oh man, do I have something cool to show you today. Let's take a look at this awesome UMAX Super Mac S900 from 1996. An absolutely incredible Macintosh clone from the darkest days in Apple's history. This machine is really unique and even has a couple extra surprises hiding inside. So over the next few videos, we're going to upgrade this and try to bring it into the modern age with a couple timely upgrades. And I even have one top secret upgrade that we're going to save for the very end. So I'm incredibly excited about this machine and I think you will be too. So stay tuned. But first, a little background on the UMAX Super Mac. So in the mid 90s, Apple was in a really sorry state. Much maligned CEO Gil Emilio had basically steered the company into a wall. With market share dipping below 7% and stock prices dipping to their lowest points ever. In a desperate attempt to quickly regain some market share, Apple had the bright idea to license the Mac OS to basically anyone who would have it. This bad idea almost completely backfired and was nearly the final nail in Apple's coffin, creating an intense amount of competition, especially in the high-end sector, against Apple's own machines. And when Steve Jobs came back in 1997, this program was one of the first things he killed. One of the last companies to actually produce Mac clones was UMAX. And they were also the only company to officially get the license to Mac OS 8, although the program was completely killed before any OS 8 computers were actually shipped. In fact, the only clone OS 8 thing that was ever shipped was an update CD to upgrade these computers to Mac OS 8. Released in August of 1996, the S900 beat contemporary Apple Macs in almost every way. This thing was powered by an upgradable PowerPC 604E in multiple clock speeds and available as a single or a dual processor. And the single processor models actually were able to be upgraded to a dual processor model at any time by just sticking another card in there. And in fact, you could even mix and match processor speeds and use two different CPU cards in here and it would run both of them. This machine also came with a perfectly reasonable 16 megs of RAM for the time, but it was upgradable to over one gigabyte, and that is an absolutely ludicrous amount of memory for 1996. More importantly though, the S900 had six PCI slots, making it infinitely expandable, and that was one of the primary things that people liked about this machine over the other Macs on the market at the time. And in my opinion, the S900 had one more thing that really set it apart. Because unlike most of the other Mac clones at the time, which could easily be confused for just another beige Windows 95 box, the S900 had aesthetic. This thing is delightfully 90s with this cool ridged pattern and this nice door hiding the drive bays. And on the inside of the door, there's actually an embossing of the Great Wave and the signatures of all the people on the Super Mac team. So I do have a lot of exciting upgrades planned for this guy. But today, we're going to explore this machine a little bit and do a couple quick quality of life upgrades, including replacing this finicky CD-ROM drive. We're going to clean up the nasty yellowed keyboard with a little bit of RetroBrite. And we're going to replace the absurdly loud fan in this thing that literally sounds like a jet engine. With a nice quiet Noctua. So everything about this computer is really nice. It is thinner than you expect it would be. And it feels extremely solid. And it's very easy to access the stuff inside. So a single thumb screw here. And it's even captive, so you're not going to lose it. And you push down these two tabs. And the back comes right off. 
so I think you can probably already spot the special thing hiding in this machine. Behind these Molex connectors, there is a bit of purple power. That is a Sonnet G3 at 500 megahertz. And we can also see some of the other cool stuff inside this machine, including the aforementioned six PCI slots. And we also have eight RAM slots currently populated with an interleaved four sticks, each 128 megabytes. And actually that was one of the bummers when I got this machine. You see, I had it shipped to me and it had four of these gargantuan 128 megabyte modules. And these don't connect very securely inside. So all of them were just tossed all over the case. Now, fortunately, the only casualties were two of these guys, which no longer work, and two smaller RAM chips that uh, I guess these hit. So all in all, half of the RAM worked and after some trial and error, now it boots just fine. And if that's the only casualty from that kind of extreme hazard, then I guess we're all right. We also have in here a SCSI CD-ROM, which is going to have to be replaced because it's pretty flaky and only boots from a CD maybe one out of five times. And we also have a floppy drive in here, which I have not yet tested. And we also have our 2.1 gigabyte quantum SCSI hard drive. On the back here, we have a nice assortment of ports, including two ADB ports, which is handy. We have a SCSI port. We have two video cards in this thing. And we have, I guess, two networking cards. I don't know what the difference is, but both of them have RJ45 jacks. But what I really want to do first is get rid of this fan because it is just ungodly loud. So I'm going to toss in this Noctua 80 millimeter fan, which should be virtually silent. And that'll mean that I can actually record with this computer on. So the fan is a pretty cool modular design. There's just two little tabs here to push in and then you can just slide it right out and it comes in this little plastic bracket here and that makes it very easy to replace. And it's just a little three pin fan here, so pretty standard. Well, it looks like I was a little bit wrong. So even though the case fits, an 80 millimeter fan looks like this is a 92 millimeter fan. So I think what I'm going to do is try to make this one work for now. And then I'm going to order the right size knock to a fan and just install that when it gets here. But this fan will work just fine. And the case has the mounting holes for this 80 millimeter fan. So we'll just go with this for now. All right, well, it's not perfect, but it'll work until the correct size fan gets here. Now, I definitely want to retro bright this keyboard. It is yellow and disgusting and does not match the case or the mouse at all. But fortunately, these keys come off pretty easily. And yeah, that is uh, pretty gross. I don't know what to say. Uh, let's take the back off of this thing and take the internals out, which also isn't that hard, just like 14 screws and just two to take this out. So nice and easy. And then we can give this stuff a nice bath out in the hot Philadelphia sun with some 40% hydrogen peroxide and just a bit of water. And we'll seal this up tight and leave it for a couple hours.
And the next thing I want to do is round out the memory here to the full just over a gigabyte. And memory in this machine is interleaved, which means that for best performance, you install matched pairs. So we're going to do just that. So first, I'm just going to pop out these two gigantic memory sticks. So I have a little more room to work with. Well, it turns out this memory I got is not correct. So it's off by just like a hair. If you can see right there, the notch is one tick over from the correct size here. So I guess I'm gonna have to look and see what I did wrong there. Uh, but for now, we'll just keep this stock memory installed. So I decided to take a little bit of a break from all of that fail and pull the keyboard plastics out of the peroxide bath and see how well they retrobrighted. And looking at it, I mean, it looks awesome. This is miles improved from what it was before, which looked like this. And that was horrible and yellowed. And now this is pretty much the natural color. I compared this against the case of the computer and it matches up really, really well. So I just had this out in the Philadelphia sun for about 12 hours in a mix of 40% peroxide and water, and it came out great. And then let's take a look at what all these cards are, including this absolutely gargantuan video card here. So the first card is a Twin Turbo 128, a fairly common 128 megabyte video card of the day. And then this gigantic card here is actually the same thing. This is another twin turbo 128. And I guess they are just different revisions. Uh, if anybody knows why these are different, uh, let me know in the comments below. But just looking at these, this one would appear to be a much earlier model. Uh, and printed on there, it says Apple IX 3D 1.0. And this one says Twin Turbo Revision 3.7. So I assume this is just a much newer card, but if you know, let me know in the comments below. And then this fine blue card is a UMAX branded card, uh, copyright 1996, a Mercury card, I guess. And this appears to house both SCSI and ethernet on it. And then this final card is some kind of, I think proprietary card with um, this kind of pin header connector at the bottom. And on here is uh, various networking interfaces and the RJ45 jack is labeled 10 base T. So I would assume that this card is an upgrade with, I guess, 100 base T. Okay, now we definitely need to switch out this CD-ROM drive because it doesn't work. And I've got this Apple 8X SCSI drive, which I haven't tested, but hopefully works. And we actually need to remove the entire front panel here, but luckily there's just three easy tabs. And then you just take out this one screw here.
And then I'm just going to make sure that these two drives are configured the same. So these jumper settings here are different. Here's the original drive. Here's the new drive. So I'm just going to make this one equal this one. Okay, and before I put this all back together, I'm just going to test out this new CD-ROM by, I guess, laying it in here. And let's start this up and see if it recognizes that drive. Well, the Noctua works. That's good. This computer is still pretty loud. All right, we made it to the desktop. I guess just for fun, let's toss in the UMAX OS 8 Restore disk and see if it works. It's not looking good. I guess let's try a different disk. How about a 922 installer? Yeah, this doesn't even seem to be spinning up, so I probably have the jumpers wrong. All right, well, it seems like that new CD-ROM does not work, so that's unfortunate, but fortunately, I have a bit of a secret weapon, a SCSI to SD adapter. So let's install this and see if it recognizes this SD card. All right, so Hard Disk Toolkit does see the SCSI to SD, so that's good. And it recognizes the card at uh, about a gigabyte, and that's what's in there. So I think what I'm going to do is put this machine back together, and uh, we'll leave the SCSI to SD connected. I don't have another uh, free... SCSI connector in here to hook the CD-ROM back up, but it's sketchy anyway, so we'll just leave that in here for now, and I'm going to try to find a working CD-ROM and a SCSI cable with two connectors on it. But I think we can probably put an installer on the SCSI to SD and boot from that and maybe install OS 8 that way. All right, so I'm going to call part one here on this kind of unimpressive bombshell. Uh, we've had more failures than successes, but the good news is the machine still works, so I haven't completely killed it. And we did get this very nice RetroBrite on the keyboard here, and it now matches the mouse and the computer case pretty much perfectly. So I have a great looking complete UMAX Super Mac S900 set. Next video, I think we'll try to really fix some of the things that went wrong today, including hopefully I've ordered the correct memory now and I've got the correct fan coming in. So even though this fan works, we'll get the correct fan that fits that weird bracket that was in here. Uh, we'll figure out exactly what we want to do with the SCSI to SD adapter. So I hope you'll stay tuned for the next episode. I've got all of these fixes and actually a whole lot more planned. So I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe down below. See you in the next video.
Thank you.